What is up YouTube and welcome back to another episode of Factory Town and before we get into the episode I just want to make you aware that I am going to speed this up slightly the gameplay the videos will show hopefully more content and uh, Achievements throughout the game the views have been a bit low in the last few videos I'm assuming that's because uh, There's not much happening or I'm waffling or they're just crap. Let me know in the comments so throughout the next stages now, and for the later game, we need to get into these mana crystals. The mana crystals then go into all of the various fire, earth, air, and water crystals, which then make the various different elements to get in, again, to the late game stuff. We will push through on the research. We are at 6 out of 10. Um, and we need mana pipes and some scrolls to progress to the research level of 8. As it stands, you can see there's a lot of backup happening all the time using these carts, no matter how I set it up, no matter what I did. Uh, two lanes, two bridges, all the things, and to be honest, nothing seems to work. But we can move around it, and there's not much point dwelling on it. We can use belts, uh, eventually we can start using trains, and there's many other things. Here you can see there's actually uh, the ability to just shut down another town centre. And just choke him straight into that. And that way it will still go into our inventory, but it don't have to travel halfway across the map. Struggling for stone a bit, and I managed to research these harvester drills, so I thought I'd give them a go. Apparently they're very quick and can carry quite a decent capacity. It turns out they're not worth it, in my opinion. Uh, they are decently quick at mining. Their capacity isn't that good. And even if you put paths down, as you can see, they don't use them, and they're really, really slow. So they are, I suppose, better than using people to a point, but you can see they are very, very slow. And as far as I'm aware, there's no way of speeding them up unless I am missing something obvious. Um, but yeah, the, for me, I'd rather just chuck a mine in there and a mine will rip it out using 10 people uh, and maybe a bit of gold if you need to. And that's much, much faster. Massive upgrade on the grain farms back behind where we originally lined those up. Uh, chucks a load more in to put into the animal feed. And then that's obviously going into a pasture to grow cotton. This is all to do its own separate entity of cotton into cloves, etc. Uh, and it's all coming directly from the fields. Extra, extra water so that the animals don't suffer if they require it and the idea here is that it's overkill and it should pump out whatever i need to turning everything up to the maximum including in some cases uh steam when needed obviously upgrade the pasture there as well to the maximum level we can at the minute to do it any further we would need i believe that was an earth crystal the purple ones and that that setup is done for now until obviously the crops start producing the cotton coming in from the back there as well into that pasture. That pasture is obviously throwing out leather, so leather and cloth going together there for future. Again, you have to wait for the uh, the the crops to initially germinate. As soon as they germinate that first time, they should then continue throughout. Especially if you provide them with water and more importantly fertilizer that will keep them producing permanently. And there we go, with both from up and running now, it is now making the fancy coats for the people to sell. Of course, this is one of the later stage items of clothing, better clothings. The only step from this now to go up from here would be to run them through a enchanter, I think it's called, and make them magical, but that's a little bit further on. So for now, this should push them up uh, and give us a lot more coins as well. So with the resources starting to run out over at the main area of our base and to be honest the whole entire map is getting a bit scarce of things like coal and iron ore. The only resources that are left for coal and iron ore, as you can see I'm already stealing the coal there but luckily because there was a sea in the way I could quite easily just chuck that over on some shoots. But there's two decent sized patches here of iron so I am going to attach a mine to each. They will then congregate into one central position that will likely be a barn to start with, but to be honest, it needs to go to a train station. So in the rail situation, I've never really dealt with the trains too much in the past, but this makes perfect sense because we've got a lot of volume to move over the pretty much the entire map, or at least two thirds of the map. So the idea here is that we'll get this train 
uh, line in to go to where I want. Now I've got plenty of rails because we've done them for quests. I didn't make them for this purpose, um, but we we do have plenty of them. Now we have plenty of them in the sense of uh, wooden as well, but we've upgraded quite a few to the metal ones. And as far as I'm aware, until you get into the magical stuff or the mechanical, these are the fastest. All I have to do is make a loop. So you can see there, that's all I want to get to. I want to get to where our infrastructure already is. The train will then come here. Now, I made this up and it just actually works. So I'm doing it around so it can go around and then back on itself. It won't just turn around stagnant on the rail. Uh, the idea then is that the train will come, collect all of this iron ore, send it back to the main uh, area that we've got it. I'll put some decent storage there as well. Uh, and then it will come back, get more, and so on and so forth. The trains are pretty good, actually. They were a bit, they're a bit clunky to set up, in my opinion. Uh, when you add them directly to it, like using this menu, that works nicely. Uh, you can add them manually as well. But copy in and paste in the tram, so the control C that you can use on everything else and then adding them it doesn't ever really attach them properly so that never works especially when you set up filters and stuff for this though all i need to do is add carts that will take the loose iron i'm just checking now to figure out what exactly i need the mine carts aren't to be used with the train the train is the engine that carts are themselves individual there you can see that's not connected already and <laughs> um you just have to yeah it does that so it's a bit clunky, but it works in the end. This is where I want to drop it off, because if you remember, this is where we had the iron and coal coming in together. The coal, unfortunately, has run out, including uh, a lot of the underground as well, using the pickaxes to mine that. So instead, I am going to train it in from the other side of the map. It will go into what will be a train station. Then it will go into the barns as an extra backup storage, and then it will go onto the belt. Now, the reason the train station is so important is because of the speed of unloading. If you don't have a train station, it does them one by one, and it's very slow. If you do with the train stations, when they load and unload, it does it in like 50s or 100s. So it's mega, mega quick, which is what you want. And right, this whole process of everything we're doing here is you want a crap ton of volume going onto the belts. So what I'm going to do is put a simple line, a shoot out of the storage that will go back into these. And then as soon as the train starts getting its first load over here, we'll be back in business. This is the only place currently I'm using iron and it will likely be the only place for the end. It's got everything here, the forges, the machine shop and everything we need. We've still got the gold coming in just because we can. I'm turning that into gold ingots and then just storing it up until the point where we get late game where we can start making any jewelry that we need of course steam trains need fuel so i'm just stealing a bit of coal here into this barn um, as you can see it automatically puts the unload icon there the red arrow and then we just need some water as well steam trains need well steam so water and coal water and fuel uh, and it's really good actually as soon as it goes past it instantly fills it up but they if they do run out they will stop so just putting this in that means that every time it comes and collects the iron and then it turns back goes around on itself it will refuel and then rinse and repeat that way it'll never run out of fuel as long as we don't run out of water which we won't because it's not going to drain the ocean and coal i would imagine that's going to last us until at least the end of the game if not further now i am storing them directly in the barn so that everything can be done with that one simple unload arrow uh, so i've set a filter in the barn out of the four slots, two for water, two for coal, and then we can't accidentally get a problem with any of that. Putting these into here, they'll obviously offload directly into the barn. I love it though because the water goes into the barn and then somehow manages to get into buckets. It's fine. And then you can see the coal there as well. Now I've only put one line of the coal in. I want the coal, most of the coal that's going out the other way, remember, is going to fuel the manor. Uh, for mana stone farms which require a crap ton of fuel i think it's like 10 per per burn so i don't want that production to slow um, and the train really doesn't use that much fuel at all so you can see it's coming in now and it should stop and start to load the iron ore there but you can see already we're still only done one now two it's very very slow and then we'll go to the next one and you can see there look it's going up in tens which with a train station, it's at least five, ten times faster than that. The fuel is 
instantaneous regardless, so you don't need a train station for that. You'll see as it goes past, it instantly just fills them up. 40 water, 20 food, though it's food, fuel, though it's somehow got 21, but yeah. Uh, and then it's restocking again just to fill up any gaps that it did have, and then on it goes. Arriving at the other end, you can see there it now offloads and into the barn. The barn then offloads onto the bell and goes in there. It's not going to offload into both of them equally because that's not how it's set up to work. And again, it's just not how I did it. So it's better to um, use the train stations, as I said. But at the time I'm doing this, I wasn't aware of them, or at least wasn't aware of their usefulness, which blows my mind because using trains, you'd think you'd use train stations, but anyway. So that is set up now. Without the train stations anyway, this is how we want it to be. I can tell it to pull out the thing from the other farm. So you basically will have two outputs coming out of that first barn because I don't imagine that's ever going to fill up. I'm doing it this way. But we now have iron, a decent amount of iron coming back into the base. So that is done. With a bit of spaghetti, I've managed to get the items over that I need. So fuel, which is the coal, obviously. I brought some iron over here as well. Managed to find some scrap left in the ground and some mana crystals. This is for a specific task and that is to make the mana pipes. You can see them, they are the next quest we need to get to level seven. So we already have the scrolls, we just need the mana pipes. These pipes are then used to transfer mana around your buildings without having to use belts. The mana crystals that you can see on the, on the shoot at the minute are not the mana, you have to cook them. They become mana and that is what you can transfer via pipes. Um, but this is just our setup to basically I did this setup just for the quest but actually if I'm not mistaken I'll leave it here because we're going to use a lot thousands of mana pipes eventually because when you get to the end game everything's about different various mentions of mana or mana crystals or the essences you don't need to put them uh, legs there by the way it, it, it's not it's like minecraft you can have blocks floating in the middle of the air it just looks better to me i don't know why i do it but i have to but yeah so you can see there all i need to do is turn that up to make sure that throws out a, a lot more um, <laughs> a lot more mana shards than that there we go and we should start making mana pipes shortly and with the 100 mana pipes done, we are now allowed to upgrade to level 7. Tech level 7, which unlocks the actual mana power, and that's what we are after. We now need to do some what look like fancy torches or wands, and some healing potion. 25 of each. Both of these are made over at the laboratory, I believe, uh, which will also require some mana, but also some of the medicinal items as well with the train station set up as well I'll just show you how much quicker the train is unloaded and there you go 400 or gone just like that so it is actually probably like more like two three hundred or per second um, and then this one on the opposite end as well which means that when it loads it pretty much loads instantly again remember that the fuel side doesn't matter you don't need a trade station for the fuel only for the goods there is a mindset or behind all of this as well for, for stone uh, just in case we run out and I can add that to this line but to be honest I'm not sure I need to and I don't think I ever actually do but it's there just in case so we're over here now at the mana area loads of mana shards you can see and also loads of mana crystals being produced going to various different places mainly for research but we are going to now need those as well for some of these next items we need to make just figuring out which items can and can't be used for um, the, the, the shoots obviously the mana crystals you can see I'm using the belt but that is exactly what you can use the mana pipes for now I could have actually used them now but again this is the main first time that I've done this so obviously I just need to learn these things obviously next time we do a, a playthrough it will go a lot smoother than this I'm sure now I need to raise this because the items that I'm making need to get to be sold. Not for the research, obviously when we've made 25 we'll be able to upgrade the, the I say research, sorry, the tech level. Not for that specifically, um, but we need to sell them just to get the, the, the purple coins and the blue coins and whatever we need to get it. It does get very expensive later on, I found out. 
So a lot of these things that I'm setting up, I'd never actually bin them, which turns out to be very useful. So if you are playing along or if you've never played or got this far before, note that these things that you're making, specifically now as well, are very crucial at the end of the game uh, and you will need them. So instead of making 25 and ripping everything down, which I've done in the past in certain games, I didn't for this game accidentally and it turned out to be a benefit in the future. So what's actually happening now, you've got the mana crystals going in there and most of the items, all we need to do now is get transferred over the complete items. And there we go, up and running. Remember the crystals that are used, the mana crystals, The you need to empty them. You can see the grey ones there are the depleted mana crystals. They will need recharging or disposing of. That is entirely up to you. Um, but of course, they do need to do that and they do cause me a lot of issues in backing up. Now you can see the items are coming out. Already we've hit the 25, but this is set up to go. So if I just leave it alone, I'll be selling them off to the populace anyway. Um, but again, remember, spoiler, you will need them later on. So once you've set this up, don't bin it. The next thing we need to make are the wands, um, which we will do around here as well because we're obviously going to need the mana. And just like that, we have the wands coming over. So all you need for that is, again, mana, uh, polished stones, and reinforced planks. So that is the planks with the iron on the ends to reinforce them. And as you can see, I'm bringing it. found a random patch of iron ore there. So I've just chucking that into a forge. The sea is great for transferring things over long distances easily with the chutes. You can see this is all going in and working as expected. We've already made four, though it's a bit slow going uh, because the plank, there we go, the reinforced planks are a bit slow. That is the only thing that is holding us back at the minute. So speeding all that up, should start throwing them out. Of course, the, the back or the gate that we're currently facing is the nails and the iron ingots or iron plates as it calls them. Just speed everything up, why not? And we only need 25 of those as well, so there we go, upgrade, and we're now pushing into level 8, needing level 9, and to get to level 9, we need some magical conveyor belts, or mana conveyor belts, the mechanical golden rails, a necklace, and an elixir of life. Now, the elixir of life requires two of the reagents, I believe it's remedy and the red health potion that we've already made recently, added together, pretty much. The belts just need to be combined with mana. Um, the necklace is pretty simple, though I do think that's where we firstly need to start getting into the stones, the earth stones, which is the ones you see there on the screen. So the red, blue, purple and yellow uh, crystally looking things there are the various different things, whether it's fire, water, earth and air. The blue star at the end is the end game, kind of, once you've completed the game, you basically give goods to the gods, and you get, uh, I can't remember what, sacrifice, gift, or donate, whatever you want to call it, but that, like I said, that's end game, and that's where you can unlock the really super powered uh, research for, like, turning global things faster and stuff like that. Not sure we're going to do that for this first playthrough. The idea here is to complete the game. So I've got the first one under my belt. And hopefully for you guys have learned something along the way. Uh, I'm aware that there are some comments made by some pros already. And thank you for those and keep them coming. So knowing now that I'm going to start needing all of these different types of mana powers, etc. I'm now bringing them together. You can see here this is some of the fire stones. There is some of the air stones, and making everything the same level makes my life a lot easier and a lot less headaches, especially when I am using the chutes that are basically locked to gravity, so I can't have them going up at any stage, but down is okay. So bringing them all over together, I'm going to try and do the whole processing of these through one building. Uh, unless it is restrictive, it depends. I've, again, this is all experimental to me. I've already got the air going in, as you can see, the yellow. The blue back there is going in as well, which is water, and then the fire as well. The only one then left is the purple, which is earth. Now, that is quite a long ways away. 
In fact, I think it's in the middle of the ocean on, on an island, so getting that here will be less convenient and we'll probably choose to go against that for now. But at least we've got three of the four and we can start processing these and see what we get, how fast they are, efficiencies, etc. And then what we want to do with them. 10k purple coins now, which is huge. Uh, I think that's enough actually to upgrade the town hall to the final stage, level 10. Elemental refinery there, so with that you give it mana and it gives you then the essences, so you get air essence, water essence and fire essence, of course no earth essence because we've got no earth or purple um, gems going in. I'm going to plumb these straight into a barn for future use uh, for research or for crafting. I would suggest uh, as a tip that I do very quickly after doing this setup is actually put them in their own barns so each color or essence whatever you want to call it in its own barn so that when you pipe out to go into various different places or things uh, it's easier than having to filter them after the fact the rechargers are quite simple they take the used depleted mana the white mana crystals and recharge them uh, there is no cost for recharging that I've seen, not for the these anyway, but they are very slow. They only do one at a time and they hold four of each. So although they are useful, I find very quickly that even when I end up building like 30 of them, it still doesn't really help. And there must be some mathematics to how many you need to keep your current mana in in sort of sync or in harmony uh, but I actually end up just cheesing it and forgetting about them and just constantly making new ones and deleting the old ones because as long as you don't run out of mana shards you should be okay depends how long you're gonna play for though but for just completing the game I think it works uh, if you want to go into the end game like creative mode where you research or the creative mode type stuff maybe there's uh, a better way of doing it but if you've done this before and you have experience on it please do let us know in the comments for reference I'll just show you that with the mana you can see I'm using the mana pipes as well now these are all underground it's a lot cleaner but the uh, the depleted ones are coming out they go into the chargers rechargers and then out back into storage or back into the buildings that you want them to go into uh, it is a bit messy, I've found. And again, I do find, and the way I ended up playing anyway, was just making loads of new ones and deleting these depleted ones. Because until you get later on where you get the mana charger building, which is much faster, um, these things just didn't seem to work unless I'm using them wrong. Answers on a postcard. And lastly, before we end the episode, I've set up another train system that goes to all of the temples. Now, you can actually move the temples. I didn't know this at the time. And I'm also not sure if you have to unlock them before you can move them. Because when I actually realized I could move them, I had already unlocked them. So, I've got a train going all over the map that goes to each of the temples, which is where you take the essences. The essences then get turned into the types of stones so the fire stones the earth stones etc uh, which is the end game items that you're going to need the train takes the essences from the setup that you saw me make previously and then drops them off at the various different temples you can also see we found some purple ones there as well so there it is now i have filtered the box cars as you can see so i think it's three per also it stops off there just to get some fuel because the last thing we need is for the train to run out of that it then collects all of the essences here at this train station and then goes back along the line to the yellow and blue temples it doesn't go to the red because the red is right next to us you can see the completed firestones there on the screen and the purple is on the other side of the world in the middle of the ocean so this is only achieving the water and air for now, um, but it is a step forward. You can then use the mana pipes to bring them completed stones, as you can see there, 
You can use the mana pipes to then bring them wherever you need them underground nice and quickly. The mana pipes are very fast, so that's definitely a bonus. But that, for now, is going to be the end of the episode. Thank you very much for watching. If you like the video, please click like. Let me know if you like the more compressed items into one video. It's pr it's about, looking at this, it's, took, it's about four hours of gameplay, four and a half hours of gameplay into this 25-minute video. So let me know if you prefer that. Hopefully you do. Again, thank you very much for watching. Take care. Goodbye.